First of all, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. I don't think there's any doubt that at the state level and the national level, it's a four-letter word, J-O-B-S, that everybody is talking about. Uh, if you continue in the role of lieutenant governor, what can you do in that role? What can the state do versus the federal, for that matter, to get people back to work? Because sure. it seems to me, and I think everybody agrees, we've got a job fair here in yeah. the Valley today that until that happens, you're not going to see the housing market turn around. You're not going to see anything yeah. happen. There's nothing more important than jobs. There's no secret. Uh, I, as lieutenant governor now, I signed an executive order about three weeks ago that expedited a project in the city of Oakland that created 8,000 new jobs. Uh, that was just one example of what we can do in the executive level via an executive order to expedite. But what can I do as lieutenant governor? I'm the chairman of the California Commission on Economic Development, which is, the, which is in charge of finding and creating jobs promote California small businesses, expedite the permitting process, put some strike teams in place where we can reach out to businesses that are thinking of leaving, and obviously the most important thing is coordinating county, city, and local and federal government. Because right now we're not coordinated. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've, I've been working on it. Yeah. And, and it seems to me it's not just a question of jobs, it's good jobs, it's permanent jobs. Well, the new sector that's coming in, in my six months as Lieutenant Governor, I must say that all the money that I've seen that's come into our state has been in the green technology sector, whether it be in solar, mm -hmm. renewable energy, wind, tax credit, particularly wind. big out here. Big, and I'm a member of the State Lands Commission, and one of the reasons that we've been in the desert quite some time is because some of the last properties that are owned by the state of California are here in the desert. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is a lot of capital trying to come into California to put solar and renewable energy plants here in the desert to create more energy. Mm -hmm. Let's switch to education uh, in your role of lieutenant governor, and should you continue that, that's a terribly big part of it too. Uh, there are growing concerns. We have one of our three school districts in the state that just announced kids will go to school five days fewer next year. All of budget matter. Teachers say that's not a good idea. You're taking five days away, but it's a way to, you know, to balance the budget or at least improve it. Uh, where do you think we stand? I'm talking secondary education right now in this state, and what needs to be done to quite honestly raise it up because we're not where we should be. I think you'll agree with that. We're definitely not where we need to be, and we're definitely not at the national average on what we're spending per pupil for, per child, and we're definitely not paying our teachers enough. Our teachers are the ec architects of our kids' future, and we're not paying them enough. I know that. I'm talking about good teachers. And we have to find a process where good teachers get rewarded and teachers that aren't doing as well mm -hmm. need to find maybe another avenue of work. How do you do that? that well, you need, you need to go to Sacramento, and you need to fight for it and continue to fight for it. There's some very powerful special interest groups up there in Sacramento that don't allow you to do that. But let's just get back to the question on education. What can we do? The first thing we need to do is fix Sacramento, because as long as Sacramento continues to be partisan and continues to be broken and continues to have 100-day late budgets, there's no certainty for schools. Schools don't have the infrastructure in place to continue to operate. They do their budgets. We do our budgets 100 days late. They've got to come back and open it, number one. Number two, we have to have an order of who runs schools in California. Is it the governor? Is it, is it the superintendent of public instruction? Is it the... Is it the CTA? Who is it? Is it the school boards? No one knows. The code's so big. Let's simplify it. Let's get down to the basics. And let's allow parents to choose districts that they want to transfer their kids. What's wrong with it? You said fix Sacramento. Basic question. Is Sacramento even fixable? Uh, yes, and I've been working on that. Proposition 11, which was very important a couple of years ago, the voters passed it, which is redistricting. The voters have put in place a citizen's commission to redistrict the districts of the politicians. See, in the past, the politicians choose the voters, so that's been passed, number one. Number two, I'm the author of Proposition 14, which is the open primary, just passed by the voters. I want people in Sacramento who are reasonable, who are open-minded, and who are pragmatic, and stop this notion of growing political parties and start focusing on growing California's economy. Speaking of growing, where do you stand on Prop 19? Uh, I'll be, <laughs> I'm a farmer, but, uh, <laughs> but... You don't farm that, right? No, we don't farm that. I'll be voting no on Proposition 19, and the reason is pretty simple. Uh, number one, this notion that politicians can't get their act together in Sacramento and they need more tax revenue, go get high, California, we need more money. We're going to legalize it and tax it. That's, I think, absurd, number one. Number two, uh, this notion that every county gets to tax marijuana on a different level, uh, 58 counties taxing pot, one county to the other, comp 
I think it's the wrong way to go. I think the Narcotics Association has said it. All law enforcement has said it. Crimes Victims United's groups have said it. So uh, I hope it fails. Finally, you are, I believe, a child of immigrants, are you not? Uh, farm workers, uh, your dad, mother, I presume, came yes. north from Mexico. Uh, where do you stand on the immigration issue? And particularly, give us your thoughts on the Arizona law that has been so extremely controversial the last six months or so. First of all, the Arizona law is a byproduct of a broken federal government system that doesn't come up with an immigration reform packet. I mean, I'm not at the border in Arizona, and I'm not watching what's happening there, but I get to see the news of all these murders on the Mexico side and everything going on, so Arizona said enough was enough. And, uh, but this notion of starting to stop people the way they look, the way they dress, and the color of their skin, I kind of have a problem with that. I think it's the wrong way to go. Uh, on, a, on the notion of an immigration package, we need a comprehensive immigration reform system that allows people to come and do jobs that obviously Americans don't want to do on a temporary basis. My dad was a temporary worker. He was a Brasero in 1965. Mm -hmm. It was a temporary worker permit. Are, are you an advocate of amnesty? No, I think amnesty will hurt our country because uh, amnesty, the last person that gave amnesty in America was Ronald Reagan. I didn't think it was the way to go. I think we ought to do is have a temporary worker permit. If you're a good temporary worker for three or four years, you apply for a green card, like my father did. And after you've had a green card for five or six or seven years, and you've been a good green card holder with no driving under the influence, no felonies, no run-ins with the law, then you can apply to become a U.S. citizen. What's wrong with that? That's how my father did. And guess what? His son is now California's 47th Lieutenant Governor. The system worked. Mm -hmm. What about the DREAM Act? Something that I think I support. I mean, I support on the notion that if you want to serve in the military for two years, then you ought to have the right uh, to apply to become a U.S. citizen. Uh, that's your choice. The California DREAM Act's even easier. It says that if we've invested $110,000 in you as a student, that now you want to go into higher education, you ought to apply for a grant that you are actually playing into. So I'm a supporter of it. Mm. Uh, I said finally, but give me, give me your 30 seconds here to wrap it up. Why voters on November 2nd here in the Valley in particular should vote for you and not Gavin Newsom? Well, I think it's a style of leadership. My style of leadership is bring Republicans, Democrats, independents, decline the states, put them in a room, and let's come up with something that we can all agree to move forward. Gavin Newsom uh, thumbs his nose at the law and says, whether you like it or not, this is what I'm going to do. And he does everything under executive order. And his policy on sanctuary city policy in San Francisco is one that is horrible. Three people were murdered because he didn't deport convicted illegal immigrant felons. That must stop. It's unacceptable in California and actually is hurting an immigration reform system. Mr. Maldonado, I wish you the best in a couple of weeks. Thank you.